Assalamu alaikum, my beloved brothers and sisters. We continue with the hadith of Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. Khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa allamah. The best amongst you is the one that learns the Qur'an, lives by the Qur'an, and teaches the Qur'an. As it's the word of Allah, the word of God, our creator, our sustainer, the one that loves us more than anything else. Beloved brothers and sisters, today we talk about Qul Allahu Ahad, or Surah Al-Samad. This is the most beautiful love letter in the world. Is the most beautiful love letter in the world. A lot of us have not studied it. And if we studied it, we took it more in, in, in kind of, of, of the, 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 the part of the tawheed and the oneness of God and that there's only one God and he doesn't have a child. But if we look at it, it's actually the most beautiful love letter. And that's what we want to study today. Not only that, there's a hadith in which the Prophet والسلام, sent a group of people in a journey and he put one person as their leader. So that person that was leading them as they were traveling from, you know, city to city, from place to place, they will stop to pray Maghrib or Isha or Fajr. And then that person would recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And after Surah Al-Fatiha would recite another uh, verse, you know, verses or a chapter. But at the end of that second chapter, he reads after the Fatiha, he would read Qul Allahu Ahad. And then comes the second rak'ah. He gets up, reads Surah Al-Fatiha and another surah. Surah Al-Fatiha had a few verses. But then after that, instead of making ruku' like we all do, he would read Qul Allahu Ahad again. So the Sahaba traveling with him said, what's wrong with you? Why are you always reading Qul Allah after you read another chapter or another verse after Surah Al-Fatiha? That's sufficient. The Prophet ﷺ never did that. And he would look back at them and say, the Prophet ﷺ made me your leader, so you listen to me until we go back. I said, okay. And then again, the Salah after that, the Maghrib after that, the Isha after that, the Fajr after that for the days, until they came back to al Medina and met with the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said, how was your journey? The, you know, everybody said it was a good journey. We were successful. You, we did what you asked us to do. But then the people complained about their leader. They said, Prophet of Allah, but we have a complaint about our leader. He was a great leader, a wonderful leader. But after every salah, in every salah, whether Maghrib or, you know, Aisha or Fajr that we could hear him read out loud, he would read Surah Al-Fatiha and another surah, which is what you're supposed to do, or Surah Al-Fatiha and a few verses. But then after those verses or after that surah, he reads, Qul Allahu Ahad. So the Prophet ﷺ looked at him and said, why do you do that? He said, Ya Rasulullah, inni uhib qul Allah ahad. Prophet of Allah, I love qul Allah ahad. The Prophet ﷺ smiled and said, Hubbaka iyaha adkhalak al-jannah. Your love for qul Allah ahad has admitted you by the mercy of Allah into Jannah. Loving. It, it, it's, it's a love letter. And, and, and when we study it, you're going to see what that love letter is. It starts by saying, Qul. Say, it is him, Allah, who is Ahad. For now, I'm going to use the word one, because a lot of people say Ahad means one. So we're going to use the word one for now. Say that God is one. Say that Allah is one. Shouldn't Allah just say, Allah is one? Why Qul? Qul is a form of comfort. Qul is... is, is, is to Allah is the most exalted example, but let's take a simple example. Your son, your daughter, your little child is afraid. And you don't want them to be afraid. Say, so you tell them, hey, I'm your dad, or you know, I'm your mom, I'm your parent, I'm always watching over you. So they're saying it, but they're still afraid of the darkness, they're afraid of where they're going to go to by themselves. And so now you tell them, repeat after me, say, say my son, say my daughter, that Baba, that mama's there watching over me. And now when they say it, it empowers their faith. It empowers that they feel that they're protected more. So when Allah says, Qul, Qul here is a reassurance. It's like, have it in your heart. Believe it in all of your heart that Allah is one. Qul is a reassurance. It's that strengthening of faith that you put in your heart. The second word is Allah. What does Allah mean? Allah, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a miracle by itself. The word Allah, I'm not even talking about Allah the creator. I'm talking about the word Allah is a miracle in itself. Number one, there is no one, nothing in the universe called Allah except for Allah. During the life of the Prophet, so he's a prophet, he lived 63 years. He was a prophet for 23 years. During those 23 years, Allah revealed the challenge. And that challenge was, Allah calls himself to the Quran and says, Hal lahu Muhammad. Do you know anyone in the universe by the name of Allah? In other words, for the 23 years of your prophethood, there is no one you would ever know Muhammad by the name of Allah except Allah the Creator. 
It's like there's there's thousands of people that hated Islam and hated the Prophet and they used to fight in Badr and Uhud and they're fighting to kill the Prophet to prove Islam is wrong. So all they had to do is when they had a, a child, a baby boy, a baby girl, it's just name them Allah. And that's it. There's someone else in the universe by the name of Allah and the challenge is over. But for 23 years, the challenge stood there and Allah proved the miracle that it is only him, Allah. He's the only one that is named by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, every word that refers to the Almighty has masculine and feminine. In English, we say God. Female, we say goddess. In Arabic, we say Rabb. If it's a woman, we say Rabbat or Rabba. Okay. But Allah is the only word in Arabic that doesn't have masculine and feminine. It's just the word Allah. Because Allah, and this is a big thing that feminists have fell in, and is God is a woman and God is a man. No, 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 no. He's the creator and sustainer. He's not male or female. He is Allah. Allah is the only word that doesn't have masculine or feminine to it. Number one. Actually, that's the second miracle. The third miracle about the word Allah itself is every word, word that refers to the Almighty has plural to it. So I can say God, I can say gods, I can say Lord, I can say lords, I can say Rabb, I can say Arbab, I can say Ilah, I can say Aliha. Allah is the only word in Arabic that doesn't have plural. So it's just Allah. It is just Him, the creator, the sustainer of the universe, the one that is not male or female or anything like we little things down in this world. It is Him, Allah, the Almighty. Qul, rest assured that Allah, that this creator, sustainer, the Almighty, the most powerful, Ahad. And here's a big mistake that a lot of people do. When they say Ahad, what does Ahad mean? It means one. No, it doesn't mean one. Ahad does not mean one. One is Wahid. Say Allah is one. Wahid. Ahad does not mean one. Ahad means the one that doesn't need anyone. Say it again. The one that doesn't need anyone. Okay? You're a single man. You're one. You're a single woman. You're one. You're by yourself. But you get lonely and you need to get married and have company or you need to have friends over. At work, you're the best engineer, you're the CEO of the company, but you need employees and you need customers to support you. You're one. Yes, you're complete, you're knowledgeable, you're the best in what you do, but you need. Allah is not wahid only, he is ahad. Ahad, he's the only one that doesn't need any other one. So when Allah created the universe, he was the one. At the day of judgment, at the end of this world, what happens when Allah takes every single life away? He comes back to be the only one again. So he's the only one. He doesn't need us. He creates us, but he doesn't need us. He doesn't depend on us. He is Ahad. So there is Wahid means one. Ahad means the one that doesn't need any other one. And only Allah is the Ahad. No one else is Ahad. So rest assured. When you're praying, when you're believing, when you need something, when you're asking, when 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 you're going through a hardship and and, and you need you need Allah's support, Allah says, rest assured, it is Him, Allah, that is the one that doesn't need anyone. The second verse says, Allah, a samad. How can I know Allah? Tell me more about Allah. Allah is a samad. What does samad means? Samad in Arabic is a word that used uh, kind of like the mayor of the city. Let, let me elaborate a little bit more. The mayor of the city back then, or the summit back then in, in, in villages, in, in, in Arabian culture, is that older wise man. Basically, you and your you know husband and wife get into a problem, they go to the summit and say, summit, man, my wife got into an argument and says, sit down my son, sit down my daughter, she has done this for you, he has done, in five minutes, the problem is solved. Someone comes from out of town and he's stranded and he doesn't know anybody and I need help. And, he, and the summit calls him in and say, my son, don't worry, sit here. And he gets him something to eat and something to drink and some money to provide him. A poor person comes begging at night and the summit says, come here, my son, have no worries. I will take care of you. Someone is sick and they don't know. And, and they go to the summit and the summit says, I know. The, you know." But, so the summit is the one that everybody in the city, everybody in the village goes to and they're able to solve their problems. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah al 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 to Allah is the exalted example. Allah says in the entire universe, I am the only Samad. Which is exactly the next, the same verse in the Quran where Allah says, يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Everybody in the heavens and the earth is crying to Allah. Right now there's someone in a ship and the ship is going through waves and it's supposed to fall and, 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 and the waves are going to destroy it and they're praying, Allah rescue us, Allah rescue us. And Allah hears their prayers and rescues them. There's someone that's scuba diving right now and maybe there's a shark behind them and he might lose the oxygen and he might die under the water. Nobody sees him except Allah and says, God, God rescue me. And Allah rescues them. And there's someone right now who's in so much debt and can't pay their bills and they're struggling with their job and don't have enough income and saying, Allah, Allah provide to me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who's able to make means and ways to provide to them. There's someone who's in the hospital right now about to enter surgery and the surgery is so severe and, and, and praying to Allah. And Allah is the only, he's the Samad, he's the one that's able to solve and he's the one that solves and he's the one that protects and he's the one that provides and he's the one that gives and he's the one, he's the Samad of the entire universe. Everybody in the heavens when an earth asks him and he gives us more than what we ask for. He gives us our health, our wealth, our faith, our family, our spouses, our children, our parents, our jobs, our occupation. And, and every time we need something, we ask him, he's the summit, he's the summit, and he's the one that provides and provides and gives and gives, of course, with his wisdom. Lam yalid. He did not give birth. Walam yulad. And no one gave birth to him. Now, a lot of people take this for argument. They want to argue with people of, you know, they believe in the Trinity and you believe in the Trinity. So, you know, God and Jesus and no, 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 no. Today, when we talk about Allah, we're not talking about arguing with anybody. We're talking about a love letter from Allah to us. So how, how, how does this tell me that Allah loves me when he says, I wasn't born and I didn't give birth? Let me tell you. Suppose right now you love me more than anything else in the world. I'm your best friend. Suppose I am your best friend and we're hanging out and we go to dinner, me and you, or go play basketball or go to the masjid to pray or reading the Quran together, whatever we're doing together. And then you get a phone call from your son or your daughter and they say, Baba, I'm so sick. I need to go to the hospital. And you love me so much. Now, are you going to sit there and say, you know, Brother Bashir, I love you. Right now, my, my kid just had a heart attack or fell and break their leg. But because I love you so much, yeah, I don't care. I'm going to stay with you. No. <laughs> You're going to say, I love you so much, Brother Bashir, but excuse me. I got to rush take my kid to the hospital. When you have that blood relationship, when, when you give birth to someone, that's part of who you are. That's part of your DNA. That becomes your first attention, your first love. You're, you're, you're distracted by that person. You could be at work. You could be sleeping at night. And, you, you know, your kids travel for days and, and, and you're always thinking about them. You're always praying that the, God watches over them. Of course. And then the reverse, your parents, same thing. You always care about your parents, you know, and, 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 and when you're young, you're always watching over them, not wanting to anger them. And when they're, old, you know, you're older, you want to always watch over them and their health and make sure that they're doing good. And, and so having children or being the child of someone means that you have a top priority and dedication and commitment to that person before anybody else. But now Allah is telling you, I love you and I don't have any distractions. I don't have any child that's going to distract me from loving you or answer your prayers or watching over you. And I don't have any parents to distract me from watching over you and protecting you and giving you what you want and better than what you want. Allah is all wise. How many times have we asked him for something and he's given us more? How many times did we ask for something and cry for it so desperately and he held it back and we're like, God, why are you holding it back? Because he's all wise and he knows the right time to give us more than what we asked for. He's not distracted. He doesn't, he doesn't have children to distract him. He doesn't have parents to distract him. He did not give birth, nor would, did anyone give birth to him. And there is no one to compare, to be on his level, to be his equal. And that is why the biggest crime we could ever do is to give any person a quality of Allah or to raise anyone to the post of Allah. Yes, we can love people so much, but when we ask, we ask of Allah. When we believe, we believe in Allah, we believe in God. 
He's the creator. He's the sustainer. He's the provider. On the day of judgment, we're standing in front of him and him alone. So we can love people. We could probably love Jesus and Moses and Muhammad. And we praise them for the great people that we are. And we follow their teachings because Allah told us to do that. But we cannot raise a man such as Muhammad والسلام, or Jesus uh, Christ or Moses, raise them to the point of God and worship them or pray to them. And because no, they are creators and creatures of Allah. Allah, there is no one that compares to him. And so my beloved brothers and sisters, with this we conclude the love letter from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read it. Memorize it. In one of the hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says, read in Qul Allah, it's the equivalent, it's the equivalent of reading one third of the Quran because it, it deals about, about the oneness of Allah, about the nature of Allah, the beauty of Allah, the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward is so much in it. Like we said when we started, we conclude with it, that a man that loved reading Qul Allah had so much, Allah admitted him to Jannah just for that one reason of loving and reciting Qul Allah and, and, and feeling that beautiful, rich meaning of it, that Allah, you, you are the one and only. Allah, there's no one that compares to you. Allah, you you, you are the one that I, I, I can reach out to. And, and subhanAllah, it builds that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. And I look forward to seeing you in the next verse as we explain it in the next surahs in the Quran. Remember, the best amongst you, the saying of the Prophet salam, the best amongst you is the one that studies the Quran and teaches it. So study it, live by it, and share the knowledge with others. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.